All right, that gets us there. Feliway? What is Feliway, No Man's Star? Yeah, yeah, I remember that emulator. The one that bugged out. Should I go back to that planet? Because that one had an ocean on it, and I don't know if I'm going to find one here. I know one of the, um, I do not like the first, it sucks, I love first person, but it's such a beast of a thing to control around in first person. Because I know at some point I have to kill a bunch of mobs while in this thing. Hmm. Inventory management is the final boss. <laughs> it probably will. I just need to fly up out of her emulator. Um. This is funny. So Chris brought Frodo in here. Frodo's in the corner cleaning his brother. And he's like, where the medicine was on his chin, he's like, let's get that, let's get that off you, buddy. They're good. They're good, brothers. The problem is these two together... Um, it's such an interesting relationship because we totally named him just because we like Lord of the Rings and stuff. And um, But the, Frodo and Smeagol, they have a very... They're brothers and they're also hunting partners. And they're the two... They're both fixed, but they're both very macho and um, dominate all the other cats here. And Frodo is bonded with Chris. And so he talks to her and he jumps on shoulders and he's a good, but he also is like the big hunter and he's half, he's not quite half the size. He's much smaller than his brother Smeagol. Uh, they're both two, a little over two years old. Hey, Frodo, you want to come here? You're being naughty with your brother now. Now you're attacking him after you finish cleaning him. Um, the problem with Frodo is, is he, he likes to go out and like bring things. He likes to kill things all the time. And he also is not afraid. Like, he's chased dogs that are, like, ten times bigger than him down the street. Um, they're good kids. I, yeah, we have too many cats. Fellaway is a stress-relieving med you can get from the vet, but it works in the air like a pheromone. Okay. Came by says, install those legs you got as an expedition reward. I never even looked at those things. Where did they go? Oh, they're probably... Hang on, I know what you mean now. Um, left arm... Engine and mobility. Yeah, but I don't have the quad... I don't know, that's, that's gonna be crafting. Alright, let me get out of here. We need to find a water planet. Dragoth says, why haven't they added an auto sort? Dude, I said this the other day. I was like, please allow me to automatically, like, uh, there needs to be a button I can click that automatically, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, puts everything in a better place. Sorts. Well, sorting isn't really what I'm talking about either, though. But, like, an auto management system where I click a button and it moves everything because like right now it's very cluttered and messy and they're all over the place you know right here it would be great if I hit a button and it just put them all up top on the top row like so it's got to be sorting it's an auto sorter right why not Gollum well when he was a baby the interesting thing is when Smeagol was a probably six four months old he he got into the uh, kitchen sponge like a sponge that you used to wash dishes with and he got a... It's the only thing we could think of that he got down in his throat. And he got... He, he was 
coughing, not a lot, but it was like we started to think that he might have asthma or something. We took him to the vet. The vet's like, he doesn't have asthma. He's probably just got like a hairball or something. And then we discovered like sponges that had little bits and pieces missing from them. We're like, it's got to be, he's the only one that's going in the kitchen at night and doing, it's got to be him. He's getting into the sponges. So we had to put all the sponges up. Um, and so for like, for like six weeks, he was running around the house and like every, every few hours he'd be like, ha, ha. Like cats do when they have a hairball or something. And we were joking that he's converting to, to Gollum in front of her eyes. Come here, Frodo, come here. Come here. Do you want to come here? Yeah, what are you doing? Why are you all wet? Were you outside in the rain? This is Christina's. This is her boy, Frodo. He tolerates me. He's the one who... He talks a lot. Um... You are soaking wet, buddy. Were you out in the rain? Were you out in the rain? Yeah. You want to go out? Come on. Oh, it's really raining outside, guys. <laughs> like pouring, pouring. Ah, let's get out of here. Find monstrosities in the ocean. That's a cool looking ship. I would much have rather rather have that one. I know, I heard it. I just opened the door because Frodo's soaking wet. He was fighting with Smeagol, so I took him out. That's not an ocean planet, right? Uh, frozen planet. No, I need, like, an ocean planet. Ooh, look at the way these align. What's beeping at me, guys? Something's beeping. Oh, it's the communicator. I don't care. I don't want to... I don't care about freighters on this one. That's for my main build. Hot planet. More than likely, I'm going to want to travel back to that uh, planet we were at at the beginning. Because that one had an ocean on it. That way I don't have to spend forever and a day trying to find a... Oh, that's a violent planet. Hold up. That's definitely not it. So, uh, let's go to the space station and jump back to that um, first planet we were on. Because that place definitely had an ocean. Your boy is named Tyrion. Man, that's a solid name. Food testing says planets are always nicely grouped together. I haven't found that to be the case always. I have found it to be the case sometimes. Um, sometimes they're all over the place. Yes, a filter would be great as well, Dragoth. Uh, like a filter and a auto auto sorter and a filter would be amazing. Can you say sandwiches? But I'm watching. Uh, see. <laughs> All right, let me get comfy. I moved around in my chair. Deathwalk says there's a button that highlights certain types in the inventory. Oh, Schlitzenberger coming in for the win. My daughter's name is Lorian. Dude, that's that's going deep, man. Space station. It was 19, right? Oh shit, I gotta pay attention to the time too. Oh, because I have another stream tonight. And I still gotta get videos prepped for tomorrow. <laughs> All 
Alright. What, what else do we still have on this? Um... It's a uh, lure deep stream on blah, 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 deep sea monstrosities and eliminate corrupt sentinels. Dragon says in the beta, the planets rotate around the sun in each system, and Pleco complained that it was too confusing. Because sometimes it enter a system and the planets would have moved around. That's badass. Seba says, I want to see a space show series. What do you guys recommend? Star Trek Battlestar Galactica or Star Trek? Have you... S okay, before I answer that question, Seba, have you seen any of those? Have you seen any of the Star Trek Battlestar Galactica or Stargate? Because I have... Yeah, I have, I, have, I have a solid answer for you, depending on what you're looking for. It's a scorched planet. I gotta go find where this place was again. No, what are you doing, buddy? What's up? <laughs> you want the chair, don't you? So can I please have the chair, Dad? Do you want to go up here? You want to stay with Dad? You can stay with Dad. Don't. No. Suéltalo. 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 No. Cable, no. Your brother has destroyed two of these headsets, and they are not cheap. What are you doing? No, don't scratch so he's, you know, he's obviously feeling good, but he does have, you know, just a UTI. Okay, hello. <laughs> he's going to pull my hair. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Just watch, guys. He already grabbed me once. He's going to pull my hair pretty good here in a second. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Just the OG Star Trek is all you've seen? All right. Yeah, it's a hundred fifty dollars snack. Exactly. His his older brother has chewed up two of these. He loves cables, and he chewed up my old Xbox wired controller too. Uh, so to answer your question, Seba, I would highly, 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 highly recommend go watch the reimagined Battlestar Galactica from two thousand one. Start with the miniseries and just watch just watch it all. The first episode of the first season, thirty three, is one of the best pieces of television sci-fi television you'll ever see but start with the miniseries watch the entirety of the battle of star galactica run uh, the reimagined one from the early 2000s it's very 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 it's my favorite sci-fi tv show of all time it's so good after that however definitely watch stargate sg1 it's fucking fire stargate atlantis is also great and so is stargate universe so if you have the time because it's gonna be like nine seasons what, the first one is nine seasons, the second one is five or seven seasons, and then Universe only got two. And then if you really want to get into Star Trek, you could obviously watch The Next Generation, but I would prefer that you watch Deep Space Nine, because Deep Space Nine has way better storytelling than Next Generation. They actually have story arcs, but to know the characters of Deep Space Nine a little bit better, like Warg in particular, you would want to watch all of Star Trek Deep, uh, Star Trek Next Generation first. But So I would say start with Battlestar Galactica. It's the most modern out of all of those. Then go watch, like, I don't know what franchise you like more. If you like Stargate as a franchise, go watch the movie and then immediately finish up the movie and go watch Stargate SG-1. Because you can roll right from the movie into the first season of Stargate SG-1 and you're going to be like, oh, this is good. It's so good, especially the early seasons when it was still on Showtime and it was still kind of more adult and it had more violence and nudity and it was definitely a more adult version. By the time it moved to sci-fi, it was toned down a little bit more. Um, but those are all good shows, but I would highly recommend Battlestar Galactica first. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I love the game with the controller testing. Um, I don't play mouse and keyboard if I can avoid it, if I can... I like my uh, controller. Farscape's good too. Farscape is good. It's a frellin' good time, man. Yeah, and you should definitely watch Next Generation before Deep Space Nine if you want to know all the characters more. Uh, but I do prefer Deep Space Nine to uh, personally. As much as I love Next Generation, 
Deep Space Nine, I just I think I think the storylines flow a little bit better because it's not so much episodic; it's more story arcs, like Worg and Jaxia, and yeah, there's some really cool stuff there with the Quark and the the Cantina and. Mm. <gasps> you have an autographed G.G. Edley pick in full Chiana gear? Oh! Farscape is what would happen if Jim Henson made Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, the OG Battlestar Galactica is okay, but I much prefer the, the, the reimagined because just it resonated with me because I was in my early 20s when it was airing. It was... It was some incredible special effects for the time. Bear McCreary has gone on to become like one of the most badass sci-fi fantasy and video game composers since that show. Like he's done everything, even but not even outside of that. He's done Black Sails, Outlander, uh, Walking Dead, the God of War games. Like, but he started on Battlestar Galactica. You know, like his soundtrack for BSG was just absolutely amazing. All right, we're looking for giant bodies of water, guys, because apparently what I need is found in a body of water. Is that water? I can't tell from here. The Expanse is good. Um, the Expanse is really good. Uh, it's my second... Like, if I had to pick a show after Battlestar Galactica as, like, a really good sci-fi show that's, like, gritty, realistic sci-fi, I would probably pick The Expanse. Incredibly well done. Um, but it's more... That's more of a hardcore... It, it, I, I, it doesn't have... How would I say that? Um, the Expanse is also, by that point, they'd gotten away... Oh, here's another consideration uh, also to think about Seba. Um, well, see, Babylon 5 is, for storytelling, Babylon 5 is amazing. I've watched it twice. I cry at the ending every fucking time. But the special effects suck balls. So you've really got to love the story to get past. But, like, um, Londo is, like, one of the coolest characters you're ever going to come across. Uh, it just... <laughs> Yak, my boy. <laughs> like, just... He's such a cutthroat politician. Um... You guys are going to get me way off on tangents now. Um, Seba, something to think about. If you're limited on time, here's another thing. Star Trek, like, The Next Generation was back when they used to do, like, 24 episodes for a season. Battlestar Galactica is, like, 13 episodes per season. Same with, like, I think The Expanse was, like, maybe 13 episodes per season. So, thinking about... As a, an example, Star Trek The Next Generation has, what, seven seasons with 24, 25 episodes per season? That is a lot. Same thing with Stargate SG-1. We're talking 24, 25 episode seasons. If you don't have a lot of time and you're looking to watch something in a condensed run, watch the more modern shows like The Expanse, Battlestar Galactica, that kind of stuff. Because you're going to be watching like 10 to 13 episode s seasons as opposed to the other ones, which are going to be like 25 episodes, which is twice the size, which means twice the time if you're limited on time for how much time you have available to watch stuff. Um, that is an ocean right there, guys. That is definitely an ocean, I think. It's nighttime, so it's kind of hard to tell here. Oh yeah, this is definitely a body of water. I could talk sci-fi shows all freaking day. So when Chris and I were dating years and years and years ago, um, I used to watch at one point in time, I, I and this is before I was doing streaming for a living and all this other stuff. Um, I used to follow at any given time, 20 to 25 shows at any given time. I just used to watch episodes. That's that, that was my thing. When I was a kid growing up, it was books. As I became an adult, it became TV shows because there's just some amazing sci-fi and fantasy and just great television out there period and then we entered the era of streaming and there's even more shows that are just really 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 good dude 
dude serious so that's the that's like one of the best the best scenes in any sci-fi show i've ever seen when they drop when they drop galactica and they warp in out of the fucking atmosphere down into the planet and they just jump in and launch the fighters to rescue everybody but from the from the prisoner planet holy shit to this day that's like one of the coolest scenes i've ever seen in a sci-fi show because you're like <laughs> oh that's such a good i got goosebumps just thinking about that um really good stuff and 33 that episode 33 is just intense eddie seba says any videos on your channel about sci-fi as a matter of fact I do. I have not updated the playlist in a little bit, but let me drop this link in chat for everybody. I have a, I have a, a series called uh, My Favorite Sci-Fi TV Shows, Sci-Fi and Fantasy TV Shows on YouTube. And it's got stuff in there like Jeremiah, which is another J. Michael Stradinsky show that he did after Babylon 5 and, and Crusade. Um, Jericho, of course. Firefly. Who doesn't love Firefly? Let me find the... Um, I gotta find the playlist, though. Um... Let's see here. I am a brown coat. I just, you know, I love all. It's easier to see bodies of water from space, says Dribrom. I gotta, I gotta find this playlist. Hang on, guys. You got me sidetracked. Content. Playlists. Now I gotta find it. Um, like I said, I haven't updated it in probably six or eight months, so I don't remember. I also review films, so I have a. Um, I have a film list as well. But in the film list, I do a lot more than just sci fi and fantasy. Like most recently, we did uh, Kevin Costner's Horizon Chapter 1. I also just did um, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. I cover Star Wars stuff. Where is this playlist? I wish I could search. Sometimes I can't search by name. You know what I should just look up is... I can look up Jeremiah because this will lead me to the playlist. And then I'll link this in YouTube and Twitch for everybody. You're probably going to hear my voice pop in the background. Hang on a second. I got to, like, mute this video quick. Oh, and you, this is going back. You're going to see back when I had the two year beard and before I had it, before I wasn't using the green screen. Ha <laughs> ha! This is awesome. Hang on. This is part of the. Well, now it's not wanting to load. Hang on a minute. It's definitely in the playlist. Well, I cannot get the playlist to load the way I want it to. So unfortunately, I don't know what's up with YouTube. It's not giving me the playlist to link to. I'll try one more thing here. Like, usually when I open up a playlist, or open up an episode from a playlist that gives me the drop down for all the playlist stuff, but it's not doing that right now. So, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked with this stuff. Uh, somebody just gifted a whole bunch of memberships on YouTube. Let me go read this. Dragoth236 gifted five memberships to the YouTube channel. Congrats to Zarzoriel, Homeless Bird, Bobby Bailey, Howieman, and Totally Jacked Up. 
Thank you very much, Drag Off. Parting gift. Loving the conversation. Hang out, but I need sleep. Also, Drip Rom coming in for the 12 months of membership, supporting for 12 months over on YouTube. Thank you very much. Been around for a hot minute. Playlists. Here we go. We're going to go look over here. Recently added. No, let's look at A to Z. I'm going to find this playlist if it's the last thing I do today. <laughs> oh, it's going to be down under. My favorite. Found it. Found it. Found it. Found it. Found it. All I had to do was figure out a different way to sort for it. So, to answer the question. Drop the playlist there in YouTube. I'm also going to drop it over on Twitch for the people who are watching over on Twitch. That's the playlist. It has not been updated for a while. Um, when was the last update I made? A while ago. I started it like a couple of years ago. Seven months ago, I did Percy Jackson and the Olympians, which was a 2023 show that Chris and I watched. Well, we've got stuff in there, um, Babylon 5, Stargate Atlantis, uh, we did 12 Monkeys, Star Trek Picard, Defiance, the, uh, the Halo series, which I actually quite enjoyed. Um, there's some news in there, like the upcoming Rift War Saga show. Um, J. Michael Straczynski was working on a reboot to Babylon 5, and then, of course, it got canned when the CW got bought out. The Sandman, which we watched recently. And then going back to older stuff, um, Caprica, Devs, Farscape, Star Trek Next Generation, Battlestar Galactica, Jericho, Jeremiah. There's a lot of fun stuff in there, and I should definitely update that playlist because it has been a while since I've, I've... There's a ton of more shows I could put in there. Um, my wife likes fantasy more than sci-fi. I probably like my fi I like my sci-fi a little bit more than my fantasy. Uh, the Twelve Monkeys show is really, really good, especially if you if you liked the most recent season of Picard, like the final season of Picard. Terry Metalis was the showrunner on that. Terry Metalis was also the shot writer and showrunner for Twelve Monkeys across its run. Um, very, very, very good show. Um, there was a there was a period of time where I, I was doing a lot of Canadian shows. So it was like, I remember watching La Femme Nikita. And then directly after La Femme Nikita, like a bunch of the actors from that show went on to star in 12 Monkeys. So I just rolled right over from the Canadian version of La Femme Nikita over to, which is with Maggie Q. And then that switched over to uh, 12 Monkeys. Um, and a lot of the cast members had switched over. And I think before that, they were on a, Another sci-fi show, which isn't even on my list. Um, it was a time travel show where they, like, set this... Oh, she was the girl who was in the Conan movie with um, Jason Momoa. And I'm going to blank on her name right now. Um, I'm going to go look up this name of the show real quick. You guys are going to get me sidetracked because when I talk, start talking about sci-fi shows, I geek out a little bit. The Conan film cast. Rachel Nichols. I'm going to go look up the sci-fi show she was in, because this is another really good show you need to watch. Continuum was the name of the show that she did. It was a Canadian sci-fi show, uh, Continuum. She's a cop from the year 2077 who has to come back to track a group of time criminals called Liberate who are trapped in present-day Vancouver. And she's got to talk to them before she takes down. Dude, it's a great, like, sci-fi travel, time travel. It's called Continuum. It was a lot of fun. And that one also had a lot of the same cast members who, like, show up in, like, places like these other sci-fi shows. And there's a lot of good Canadian science fiction shows. Altered Carbon was fucking awesome. Love that show. Um, yeah, the smoking man from the X-Files was in that, for sure, in Continuum. Yeah. You can tell I've been talking a lot, because the Xbox just went into slow mode. On that note, guys, you got me yapping. I gotta go. I'm three hours in, and I gotta, I got a boatload of stuff I gotta get done today still. And I'm supposed to do another stream tonight, depending on the weather. So, if the weather's good, I'll probably be back in about 
four hours for World of Warcraft. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow continuing the expedition. We've only got a little bit left. Let's check. We've got Blood in the Water and Purple Mist for this one. And then we've got Phase 5. So my objective is to try to wrap this up by Friday. So we've got tomorrow. Excuse me. And then Thursday and Friday. If we don't get it done by Friday, we'll continue it into Saturday. And then we'll go back to my main save. Does your husband have a YouTube channel by any chance, No Man's Star? Because I follow a Canadian leather worker who does a lot of, like, costuming. I mean, it would be sheer coincidence. I'm just asking that while we're here. Because, uh... I forget the name of his channel now. I follow his YouTube and, I'm, and I've got him on on Facebook. But there's a guy I follow who does a lot of uh, leather work for uh, Canadian TV shows. And I would have to go look at his YouTube channel because I can't remember the name of it now. Anyway... We'll be back tomorrow doing more of this, more of the same. If you happen to catch parts of the stream and you didn't catch all the stream, don't worry. It is coming out in episodic format on YouTube. Um, we started the we started the series last night. There's more episodes scheduled for tonight. So uh, those are broken into 30-minute chunks. So it's its own playlist on YouTube related to the expedition for the liquidators. Um, and then um, from here... Uh, once I wrap up here, we're going to be going back to my main save, and I'm going to be working on my freighter and my base building and just continuing to learn the game. I want to finish up the storyline and everything else. But don't forget, we're doing this until the 22nd, and then we're switching over, and we got World of Warcraft for a few days, and then Star Wars Outlaws, Space Marine 2, and all the other stuff we're doing. So hopefully we'll see you for all the stuff. Once I figure out the new schedule, once I switch over to doing other things for the mainstream, I will be picking a night of the week that I will be streaming No Man's Sky on. Um, it might be Monday night. I'm not sure yet. It depends on how the Lord of the Rings Angmar thing is. Um, and there might just... I might end up picking like one day a week, like a Sunday, where I come in and do like the 11 a.m. multi-stream at the normal time for No Man's Sky. But I'm going to be continuing to play this for the foreseeable future because it doesn't look like Light No Fire is coming out anytime soon. And I have a boatload of stuff that I still want to get done for this game. So hopefully you'll stick around for the long haul, everybody. In the meantime... Oh, he doesn't, but he does provide leather and stuff, though. That's cool, though. It's a weird coincidence. Homeworld? I tried the beta for Homeworld 3 about six months ago. And the controls were so confusing that I said, no thanks. <laughs> I did... Homeworld 3 looks amazing. The one that just came out, like, a couple months back or something. But the controls were so messed up, I was like, I'm not... Mm -mm. not gonna try to learn a whole new map of controls just to play a video game if you can't make it simple for me to play on a controller I generally speaking don't want to play your game like it needs to be something I can just pick up a controller and play with and that thing was like I remember loading up the Homeworld 3 beta and it was like here's these 500 combinations of key keyboard combos that you're gonna need to learn in order to play it I couldn't do it yeah, there's no way I'm getting it done, Dribberum. That's why um, we're going to finish the expeditions, and then No Man's Sky is going to be... I'll probably play this the rest of the year. I don't see why not. I mean, it'll take me forever to finish the main storyline, and if it's 100 hours plus to get to the center of the galaxy, it's not like it's. It's not like we're in a rush. Light No Fire isn't going to be this year, so I've got plenty of time to, get, to just do the rest of the things I want to do in this game. Um... As always, it always depends on the viewership and everything else. As long as the views are still good and everybody's showing up for the streams and the videos, I just keep plugging along because that's how I make a living. I will see you guys tomorrow, maybe tonight, for those of you who want to hang out this evening. Stay safe. Thanks for the tips, everybody. Thanks for the chats. Thanks for the... I'm always happy to chat sci-fi and fantasy TV shows. It's always one of my favorite things to do. Don't forget, if you're watching on Twitch, check out all the stuff over on YouTube. We got guides and videos and reactions and other stuff coming out all day today. See you guys.